The only way we're ever going to stop them is if we all work together. Because our water systems are connected, people travel, there's no way we can do this on our own. For the everyday person, they're probably not mostly aware of zebra and quagga mussels, but they represent a huge threat to our way of life in the province. But the second they see the impacts, when you look at a pipe with all the zebra quagga mussels potentially in it, they realize the gravity of the issue. I think uh, British Columbians should think about the value of their ecosystems, whether you're uh, an angler who enjoys fishing or you're a ratepayer if you have a water bill or a hydro bill you pay, or whether you're a farmer that uses water to irrigate crops, these mussels can impact everyone. For those communities that rely on tourism, the impact on their tourism dollars could be horrendous. My my thoughts have always been to make sure that I keep my section of the world clean so that the downstream users have the clean water as well. Currently there is no infestation in the Pacific Northwest, including BC. Only groups like the Invasive Species Council of BC have been doing a great job and the Regional Invasive Species Council and a lot of other organizations in educating the public, doing outreach, teaching the message clean, drain and dry watercraft. This is a real big threat and we, something has to be done. I think that it could be a real emergency issue that we will have to face. It would be very detrimental to our economy. If we fail to keep them out of our freshwater sheds in this 10 jurisdiction region, it will cost us a half a billion dollars every year for the rest of our lives. Next steps are an awareness and support for programs that prevent them from coming. We see new initiatives that have come out where we're inspecting boats that come into the province. This whole concept of behavior change. A boater doesn't have to know all the history around zebra and quagga mussels. If they just clean, drain and dry their boat, problem solved. If school children learn about it, they go home and, and teach their parents like they did with recycling and seat belts. When the child comes home and says, I learned this today and they're really excited about it. And that's the best way to get that message across to the, to the users of the water. Those little things that we can all do that'll make a huge change. And I think the people of BC will make those changes if they know. That's a start anyway. We also need to make sure that there's secured funding available. The biggest step is to get all the stakeholders at the table. We know it's gonna cost a half a billion a year, but we can't seem to get the money to prevent it. We've got to create the partnerships so that you're ready to make sure we've got a long-term sustainable program, both to prevent mussels coming into the western provinces, but also in the event that they do arrive here, that we've got a coordinated response, we've got the tools in place to deal with the issues. So it's just a network of cascading partnerships that from the top rate right at the bottom that you really need to have in place. To learn from each other, to share best practices, to promote a communication strategy so the public really understands how important this is. Because we have way too much to lose 